never been part of a conspiracy, but I'm starting to think this is what it must feel like to be on the outside of it. You're ever thinking this, either wear the jersey or get off the field. You need to tell me what happened to you. I can't defend you. Do you understand that? You asked me to set fire to this place, but I'm still sitting. Maybe he's guilty. Maybe he is. We're doing our job. I'm not welcome home. That's not a part of my job. If I'm wrong, when it comes to my reckoning, I'm the one that'll have to answer for it. What makes you think you're any better than the rest of us? I don't think I'm better than anybody else. That is the point. Mr. Slahi, would you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? The Mauritanian. Kevin, Jeff in Las Vegas, good to talk to you again. Yeah, nice to talk to you. How are things going? Well, it's, it's, we talk about, you know, life in a day, but I, I, I've been dying to talk to you about this movie. You know, I miss you on the original tour, so I'm, I'm so happy to, to talk to you about this important film. Great, great. I'm, 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 I'm happy to be here to do it. <laughs> well, this is a true story of a political prisoner held at uh, Gitmo under the suspicion of recruiting 9-11 terrorist attack. Three years held without charges against him. Uh, you know, in times of war, justice and liberty can be suspended, abused, or even disappear, can it? Yeah, I mean, I think you said three years imprisoned without trial. It's actually 14 years. Well, the beginning, the beginning it was three years. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's a long period of time. And of course, that's what happens when a country feels itself to be vulnerable, attack, under attack. Um, people tend not to, to pay much attention to the niceties of the rule of law. And uh, when that happens, that obviously there can be a grotesque miscarriages of justice like this one, you know, where somebody um, is picked up, maybe for reasons, maybe there was susp reasons to suspect him, but actually there was zero evidence against him. And after 14 years of trying to find evidence of trying interrogating him for thousands of hours, they did, still didn't find anything against him. So we have to assume that this man is innocent. But there was an important scene where Jodie Foster, when she's being interviewed, that she's saying the injustice affects all of us. And she's fighting for all of us, defending the rule of law. And that was a, a stark reminder because you can get caught up in the emotion and, uh, you know, point the finger and just kind of turn a blind eye. But I thought that was a really sobering moment in the movie. I think it really is. And I, I think, you know, the times we're living in with the, you know, politically precarious as they are in some ways, you know, we saw in America recently where where your your president, um, uh, you know, tried to, to overturn the, the 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 results of an election, and uh, you know the law did what it needed to do, and 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 um, the constitution did what it was meant to do, and I think. What we, but we can see how fragile that is if just a couple of people in the Supreme Court, for instance, decided, no, we, we like this guy. We want him to stick around despite the fact he lost the election. Things could be, a, it could have been a very different outcome. And I think that's, that's the kind of thematic uh, core of this movie. But really what I was trying to do is to tell a human story. You know, it's a very different uh, 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 telling of, an, of a war on terror tale because it's very much about how that war on terror affected three individuals, three different individuals from very different you know, backgrounds. Uh, the, the liberal lawyer, Nancy Hollander, uh, military lawyer, uh, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, Stuart Couch, and then the prisoner himself, played by the brilliant Tahar Rahim. And we, I hope, uh, empathize with all three of these characters during the course of the movie. Well, um, springboarding off Benedict's character, you know, he, like you were saying about the Supreme Court and, and, and Trump's uh, trying to overturn the election, there are handfuls of people that take an oath that put country before, uh, you know, all these conspiracy theories. And so I thought it was important to see that he stayed true to his oath. He was there to defend liberty and defend his, his rights and uh, how the rest of the country, the rest of the cover up, they were like, no, you know, we need a scapegoat. We got to make it an example because there's no evidence of that. And he chose his honor and oath above everything else, which you know that was that was he's essential heroic, yeah i mean i think he's a really heroic man um stuart couch colonel couch he uh is a republican he's a longtime military guy he's really part of the establishment and he was told you know get this guy the death sentence and he thought well look i'm, I'm going to do this with pleasure because actually one of his friends was the co-pilot on one of the planes that went into the twin towers so he had a personal vendetta as well he wanted nothing more than to bring somebody to justice for that. But as his investigation into the case goes on, he begins to have doubts about what's being presented to him. 
And I think it's an amazing thing when somebody who's really on the inside like that stands up and says, you know what, this is rotten, this is wrong. I'm not gonna walk that way, I'm gonna walk this way because this goes against the principles that we, we should be upholding. And I think that's why I say that this is not really a political movie as such. It's not a, certainly not a partisan political movie. It's about the decency of individual human beings. And I remember that well during those times how, you know, the America doesn't engage in torture, you know, but after 9-11 and, and this movie's front and center with torture. And uh, what well, Rahim, I noticed not only the emotional gambit he went through in this character, but also did I notice a physical change in him too? He looked thinner in some scenes too? Yeah, absolutely. He, he, um, he went through a real physical change. I mean, it's very difficult. It's a very, very difficult role to play. I think he does, you know, an outstanding job. Um, and um, one of the reasons it's so difficult is because he kind of, when we see him at the start of the movie, it's actually him sort of two thirds of the way through his journey. So he's already experienced all this mistreatment, all this horror that's happened to him, but we don't know it. And we have to sense there's some, what is it with this guy? There's something odd about him. There's something nervy about him. And then slowly we're gonna rewind and we're gonna see what happened to him. And at the same time, in the present tense, he's gonna go forward to the courtroom scene at the end where he gives this beautiful speech, which is very much, by the way, pretty much word for word, what the real Muhammadu said in that court scene. Um, so yeah, he has to, he has to be convincing to an audience that, you know, right from the outset, you need to think he's been through all of this stuff. And you can't be accused of sensationalizing or over the top of the torture scenes because literally it's, it's a matter of record, correct? Absolutely. Everything in the, everything that you see in that sequence, you know, obviously we try not to be too graphic about it. We try and show it in a way that doesn't make you want to turn off your TV. Um, but everything you see, for instance, you know, molestation by a couple of female guards who are working under the orders of the, you know, the, the superior officers, um, uh, threats to ship his mother to Guantanamo to have her raped by other detainees, uh, waterboarding, obviously taking him out in a boat into the ocean and, and sort of mock drowning him. All of those things, every single thing you see there actually happened. Um, and uh, I think that it obviously is, un it's, it's uncomfortable, but I think we need to see that. But also I think what's very, very different about this movie is you're seeing this all from the point of view of a man who you've grown to empathize with, you've grown to like, who is, who, who is Muhammadu. So uh, it's not like a film like Zero Dark Thirty where you know, you're always on the side of the interrogators, you're on the side of the Americans and these people who are being tortured are just you know, nameless, faceless people. This is, this is a movie where by that stage in the movie, you are with this man emotionally. And so it's much more potent, I think, than it would be otherwise. For some reason, I'm seeing myself now on the main screen and not you. And that's really weird looking at myself. <laughs> well, we're at the end of our interview. You're back now. You're back. <laughs> I'm back now. Well, you know, Kevin, what a powerful film. Uh, congratulations. Now available on on DVD and, uh, and on digital. And one final thing, were there any iguanas uh, injured during the production? <laughs> no iguana is injured, although the iguana handler was injured because those things can scratch, let me tell you. His hands were covered in iguana scratches. <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much for joining me today and good luck. We'll talk again soon. Thanks a lot. Nice to talk to you. Bye-bye.